Coming up on St. Paul Forum, we have guest Maria Isa, who is a musician and advocate for relief efforts in Puerto Rico. Stay tuned. Welcome to St. Paul Forum. I'm co-host Laura K. Prasser, and today our guest is Maria Issa. She's a member of Puerto Ricans in Minnesota Committee and advisor for El Funda Borica. Maria, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. So Maria, you have been interactive with Puerto Rican relief efforts well before Irma and well before Hurricane Maria, correct? Yes, uh, I am, you know, Puerto Rican descent. Uh, born here in Minnesota, but Puerto Rico was born in me. My family is from Puerto Rico. And uh, my whole life has been dedicated to Afro-Puerto Rican arts and uh, the Puerto Rican movement. So we've, uh, we, we, just because the hurricanes happened didn't mean that we just started uh, our relief efforts right away. Um, we've been obviously advocating for Puerto Rican rights and the Puerto Rican movement for a very long time. That's very true. You know, um, Puerto Ricans have been struggling with their economy already and recently. It's just gotten worse, mm -hmm. especially two months ago, Hurricane Maria came through, but six days prior to that, they were already hit with Hurricane Irma. Right. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, when, her, when uh, Hurricane Irma hit Irma, um, there was, it left the island uh, 80 percent, or 80,000 people on the island without electricity. And then as soon as they were still recovering from Irma, and then Maria hit and f wiped out the complete electrical grid on uh, the island of Puerto Rico. So, and still to this day, there is about uh, 1.7 million people without electricity. Well, and this is a huge effort to rebuild, revamp, help out in any way possible. I mean, in Minnesota alone, there's mm -hmm. 13,000 Puerto Ricans and more on their way right. just to get out of the dire situation. Definitely. You know, and in Puerto Rico, there's 3.4 million citizens who need help. How can people help? People can help here locally. Um, by if it funding, I'm, I serve as the advisor for Fondo Boricua, which is a donor fund of the St. Paul Foundations, um, where we vet uh, 501c3 organizations and grant them uh, donations. So, so far within the past two months, immediately uh, following Hurricane Maria, um, at Fondo Boricua, which is a fund that my mother founded in 2005 as a fund to donate towards uh, Afro-Puerto Rican arts and other Latino arts and services within the Latino community here. But immediately once the hurricane hit, um, Hurricane Maria, uh, my mother and I spoke and, and recognized that we needed to get a uh, hundred percent. Change focus. Change our mission towards not just arts, but a hundred percent on hurricane relief on how to relieve and rebuild a Puerto Rico for Puerto Ricans. Well and how to spread awareness for across the country. I mean your guys' reach is not just Minnesota, no. it's all over the United States. Definitely we've been working with local efforts and helping nationally um, to directly rebuild Puerto Rico in Puerto Rico. So we funded, you know, over, I, I think the, the organization list of who we fund has gone over 10 organizations so far wow. within two, uh, two months. Um, most recently, we just uh, donated $15,000 to uh, El Grito de Sunset Park Relief in Brooklyn, New York, which uh, were one of the first organizations and uh, groups in Puerto Rico to uh, assist in the aid that Minnesota had wow. sent um, via Delta flight in October 10th 
uh, last month. So the, their, their uh, director, Dennis Flores, was on site and made sure that um, the goods that came from Minnesota were distributed to the island and weren't just frozen and stocked through FEMA's port. Right. So right. Uh, we, we uh, donated $15,000 to the organization, which was uh, allowed to buy a, a um, one of the seven trailers and containers that, that arrives to Puerto Rico uh, tomorrow. Um, oh, wow. So one of those uh, container trailers, which is a frozen uh, container um, trailer that free that that will, will help and runs off of solar and battery, mm -hmm. and uh, assists with medicine and and dry foods, canned foods. Um, there's generators on those containers and trailers, so mm -hmm. it, it was a, a, an amazing effort. Another another organization that we've helped fund is uh, Waves for Water through the Rock Steady Crew for Life, directed by Rich Crazy Legs Cologne of the Rock Steady Crew Break Dancers, who's <laughs> Puerto Rican, and he's uh, we donated eight thousand dollars to his project, which has brought um, uh, water filtration services to these rural uh, communities in Puerto Rico and the mountain communities that um, have yet to see government aid reach there. Well, you were telling us it's taken forever for government aid to get there. You were telling us about your family earlier yeah. Yeah. and the experience they're having just burying their own dead. I mean, you know, I have a, my mother's cousin who recently came um, to New York City at once she was able to get on a, a flight that was affordable because it's another thing traveling to Puerto Rico, the, the airfare to leave Puerto Rico is extremely high. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she had informed me that, you know, she thought one, she was going to die during the hurricane right. because of the winds. and. Um, Secondly, after the hurricane, because there was no aid coming, it was just neighbors to neighbors and experiencing people in her neighborhood that had passed and families that have been burying their own elders in their backyard. Um, so to hear that trauma, because it's, here's another issue, the, the suicide rates and the mental illness rates in Puerto Rico due to this PTSD is skyrocketed. So uh, along that, uh, other services that El Fondo has been able to provide through funding is through the, uh, here locally is through the U of M Medical Puerto Rican Outreach Relief that sent five medical practitioners from the University of Minnesota, wow. from the state of Minnesota to Puerto Rico to um, distribute medicines such as insulin and yeah. um, heart and uh, asthmatic uh, medications and do personal on-site uh, checkups with elders. Necessities and that people don't have right don't now. Don't have, so you know, we've been able to do a lot with a little and like I say, uh, every bit counts. Right. Um, volunteers uh, th that have been able to uh, donate goods from the Coalition of uh, Puerto Ricans of Minnesota to uh, another organization or another alliance called the Minnesota Alliance of Communities for Puerto Rico. Okay. So different groups and community sectors um, of Puerto Ricans and non-Puerto Ricans that recognize that these are U.S. citizens. You know, Puerto Rico is a U.S. colony of the United States for over 100 years. Right. And these are military. These are our doctors. Uh, we have so many uh, corporations and pharmaceutical companies that oh, are in Puerto Rico that uh, that are not getting any aid right now. So. Well, and that's ridiculous. You know, we're sitting there and we take a look at Hurricane Katrina mm -hmm. and all the relief efforts around that. Mm -hmm. They're still rebuilding, and the fact that Puerto Ricans haven't even gotten aid, and it's yeah. two months later, yeah. is just crazy to think about. It's definitely, definitely uh, such a, a sad situation. Um, however, there's hope with numbers and people and voices. So, you know, if you don't have a, an opportunity to donate, you know, uh, funds, which if you are, if you do, you can donate funds to elfondoboricua.org. That's E-L-F-O-N-D-O b-o-r-i-c-u-a dot org. Um, you, can, you can just be a voice of calling up your local representatives, your state offices to your, your national offices, your congressmen, mm -hmm. your senators, and let them know that action, there's a call for action on Puerto Ricans to have human services and aid immediately. Not just a box of a FEMA lunch that includes Skittles, Pop-Tarts, mm -hmm. and a strip of beef jerky. That's, That's not inhumane. enough. That's, That's not enough. Not enough. And much like, much like food shelves, giving the money to these organizations that are already established, 
that money can be stretched mm -hmm. far for the necessities, for the nutrients, for everything they need yes. in aid right now. Definitely. You know, it, they don't have to wait. They don't have to go to Red Cross, which no. is a great organization. Right, right. But Red Cross goes wherever need is across the states, and we need it in Puerto Rico right now. Right now, and I can assure you, um, you know, when the St. Paul Foundations are advised by our fund and what we fundraise, mm -hmm. that uh, goes directly to vetted 501c3 organizations that are on the island, that are, uh, if they're if they're not from the island, they are from national relief efforts that are in the island right now. Uh, we have uh, CNED Solar, which is another amazing project, specifically geared for children um, that are still living without electricity and, and, and no schools. So their project has been able, we were able to fund them, was a grant to get a, uh, a you know, solar access to mm -hmm. show movies and educational films and to keep children keep spirits up and up. keep children yeah. being children Popcorn and grapes and fruit and, and providing goods that the kids can can uh, still be youth I mean you're, you're not just the youth but also their families their, in their tragedy parents. you need that kind of humanity you need children being children yes. and parents having just that five minutes an hour reprieve to breathe and say Life's going to be okay. It's going to take a while, but life is going to get back to the way we were used to. Exactly. Or hopefully better. Right, right. So like I said, you can go on to elfondoboricua.org. Um, you can email us uh, directly at Puerto Ricans in Minnesota at gmail.com. Uh, but if you follow up with our website, we'll update it, you know, um, as much as we can. Um, as soon as someone is, is granted, we make sure that our, our donors are recognizing where their funds. Mm -hmm. And if you know of a 501c3 nonprofit that is doing hurricane relief that may not be on our list, we want to know. Yeah, we and you contribute those funds to who you would like that your funds to go to those organizations or if you're unsure of which organization, if you want to direct it towards medical or water or electric or even um, shelter and and um, and as well as uh, services, human services for Puerto Ricans that are here in Minnesota that have been arriving to live with families or, or attend universities and schools that are mm -hmm. taking uh, students in. Uh, we're, we're doing from, from the littlest to the most because like I stated, every little bit counts. Every little bit counts and the fact that you have contacts from the littlest to the most just goes to show you can direct anybody who has questions. You can tell people, hey, if this is what you want, put it in this fund. If this is Correct. what you want, put it in this fund. Right. And right, every little bit helps and that's what we need right now is that kind of help. Definitely, definitely. Um, my family is from there. I have family on the island, um, still with uh, you know very little means of, of electricity and uh, access to clean water. Mm. Um, largely, right now, is the water, uh, the lack of clean water and resources to get filtered water, um, which is causing an epidemic. Right. And you know, when you don't have any water, you're going to drink from where you can get it, and that water is is contaminated. We have to think about the animals that have died and the the cause of mold through the flooding. Um, so there's there's a strong need, and we've been seeing specifically a lot of people donating towards uh, getting wa water filtration. Well, and you're not just hearing about this firsthand. You're going down there, and mm -hmm. you are talking to people, and you are witnessing it. This isn't you hearing it from other people, from refugees. It's not, you know, you're just in the States working this. You are down there on the right. ground. We definitely have our people on the ground. I plan on going to Puerto Rico uh, next week. Um, like I stated, we were trying to get there earlier, uh, but we have uh, p members of the Puerto Rican community in Minnesota that have gone, mm -hmm. that we've been able to you know, send stuff, send, uh, stuff or support their uh, initiatives and their, their relief efforts. Mm -hmm. um, the reason being why I haven't personally gone there is because of the national efforts that we're working with, that I've been taking more time on dedicating that. And secondly, the TSA, the, the prices in flying has been extreme. So instead of spending $2,000 on a round trip ticket for me to go for three days to site visit and, and, and recognize where our funding's gone to, I've dedicated those funds specifically towards 
El Fondo Boricua. So now that uh, there's there's more um, leeway into being able to travel a little bit more affordably, and the fact that we have uh, shipments that we've helped with, now I feel is more beneficiary for me to be going down there to see and to help distribute what's being sent from Minnesota. Well, and to check on your family. And definitely to you check on my your family. You have your own experiences down there. Tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, I mean, I've been, I was six months my first time being in Puerto Rico. Though I'm proud of, you know, being in Minnesota, born in Minnesota, my roots are there. And um, my family has done a phenomenal job with recognizing our, our culture. And, and preserving our folk culture, but also contemporizing, which is a lot of what I do through music and arts. And my company's called Soda Rico. Mm -hmm. And we've been able to, the, to donate all of our music sales since September to uh, our online music sales and merchandise from my company to go directly to El Fondo Boricua to help specifically cultural institutions that are no longer standing. These, these um, institutions and, and buildings where I learned how to sing, where I learned how to play our traditional rhythms, where our mentors live and, and, and our, our educators of, of our cultural identity and pride um, who've lost everything. So we, we, we're not trying to rebuild Puerto Rico the way that it was. We're trying to rebuild a better Puerto Rico while continuing our pride and our traditions for a, a, a future of Puerto Rico for Puerto Ricans. Well, giving back the culture that you learned that they lost in this tragedy mm -hmm. is really what you're trying to do. Well, you know, I, I don't like to say we're losing it. We're, we're, we're fighting for to, it to continue in the way that it should. And we're, we're working and we're, we're rising, we're uplifting. You know, there's a hashtag that goes around that says Puerto Rico se levanta, Puerto Rico will rise. And, and we rise when, when, you know, if we don't have light, we're still there with our instruments. We're still figuring out a way. I, uh, you know, Senator uh, Melissa Lopez Franson of Edina, she's from Puerto Rico, you know, her parents are out there. And I, she gave a great story, which is very similar to many of our families in Puerto Rico, that if you have something, you give and they're mm -hmm. cooking for, you know, not just their household, mm -hmm. they're making rices and paellas for the whole community. And, and it's, it's, it's what can you bring forth? And that's what the genuine, you know, that's what, that's what humanity is. That's what the genuine facts of why we're human beings, regardless of where you come from, what's your skin color, what, what language you speak. It's about when you're in times of crisis, it's, it's to recognize the purpose of life and unifying so that we can grow and rebuild and relieve at the same time. It's not gonna be easy, it hasn't been easy. There's been, I, I mean, first forehand, I've lost a lot of sleep because you, you, you just worry about, you know, making sure that things are going to the right places. Mm -hmm. But I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't take back any of the sleep that I've lost because I know that it's, it's for a good purpose. Our communities who have been working tirelessly here locally in Minnesota and throughout the country and on the island, we work tirelessly because we appreciate and we uh, uh, respect what Puerto Rico has been for us as Puerto Ricans on the island and off the island. And we recognize how much we need to be a part of bringing that back for the future of Puerto Rico and Puerto Ricans. That's very true. Um, for those watching, what do you want them to know right now? Or organizations that want to give or want to help, what can they do? Well, I, I advise you to um, follow up with us um, at Fondo Boricua. Uh, hurricane relief for Puerto Rico at uh, elfondoboricua.org. I also would like for others to recognize that if they don't know about the Jones Act, it's something that we must call Congress. We need to call our congressmen. We need to discuss this with our senators every day. If they've heard it before and they're not moving, call them again. That's their job. That's your right. You hassle them. them. Yeah, Hassle that's them. your job. There's no knock on their doors. You know, I, I recently went with the Coalition of the Willing um, to Washington, D.C. with the president of the Puerto Rican truck uh, union truck drivers and um, directors from the Sunset Park Relief and me representing Puerto Ricans in Minnesota Committee to Congress, uh, speaking with several Congress uh, members and representatives of Puerto Ricans in Congress to recognize the lack of federal aid that's been happening and the response mm -hmm. that, 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 that is slow. 
um, and to show them what we've done as non-government non aid, as just local and, and national efforts joining forces together to provide. What the people provide. can do to yeah. provide. Yeah. And the people are a force to be reckoned with, and the federal government needs to step up and match it. Please, you know, the Jones Act. We want to condemn, get rid of the Jones Act. For those who don't know about the Jones Act, Google it. We live in a time where we have electricity, we have technology, use it for your benefit and help people out. So um, my, my main focus is right away aiding our people, making sure that they have those you know, human and social services um, that are our rights as human beings, regardless of where you live. You know, water is essential, food is essential, electricity. Um, how are our hospitals supposed to run just by generators? Right. You know, but we are providing generators so that they can run, so that until we fix this big issue of this electrical grid, um, our people can still survive in hospitals through being able to get surgeries and procedures mm -hmm. done. I mean, it's been a nightmare to recognize and to, to, to see uphand that there's, there's a lack of that aid, but it's also been uplifting to, to recognize that we can help. We can be that aid. Yeah, that missing link, find the missing link within yourself and, and, and place it and connect it with everybody else, and we've got a chain reaction of humanitarian efforts. Can people volunteer, speaking of humanitarian efforts? Yes. How, where, when do they go down there? Do we flood tourism? What mm -hmm. do we do to help yeah. as a volunteer basis or as a tourist basis? Connect with organizations that are down there right now. Connect with your alliances here, such as you know the Minnesota Alliance of Communities for Puerto Rico. Um, they're on Facebook. Uh, once again, that's the Minnesota Alliance of Communities for Puerto Rico. Another uh, group is uh, La Coalición de Boricuas, the, the Coalition of Puerto Ricans of Boricuas in Minnesota. They're also on Facebook. Um, and uh, you can outreach to, you know, PRIM, to the Puerto Ricans in Minnesota Committee at Puerto Ricans in Minnesota gmail.com. If you're unsure of where to go, we can guide you to certain places here locally or recognize that there are also national efforts that are there and organizations that do need your help. Um, we can direct you as Puerto Ricans here locally to make sure that your services are going to the right purpose and right cause. Where they need to be. Right. Now, as you've been working with these organizations, where have you found that they need the most funding, the most help, the most efforts in what area? I mean, they're out of water, they're out of power, they're struggling day-to-day -day issues. Mm -hmm. Where are they struggling the most? They're struggling the most in the mountain towns, the mountain areas. So, and I mean, I, I hate to say that, uh, you know, one is less than the other because everyone around Puerto Rico, and I recognize that Puerto Rico isn't just one main island. There's, there's Vieques and there's Culebra that are populated islands of Puerto Rico. And um, so Vieques is very in need of, of aid within medical and water and electricity, as well as Culebra. The mountain towns, Utuado, or, uh, Orocovis, Morovis, um, you know, Pinuelas, these, 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 these towns that have been dis just left with, with nothing. Um, and it's, it's very difficult to access transportation. You know, if you, you think about it, you can have a truck full of goods and semi-trucks and drive through San Juan and go down to, to you know, to Luquillo, Farjaldo, around the island, but it's hard to get semis up a mountain, you know, so finding ways. And I'm ways sure there's some roads that just are after destroyed, yeah. destroyed. You gotta think, a major dam through um, Isabella was completely devastated, oh, wow. which caused even more flooding from the hurricane. So that eye of Hurricane Maria just didn't rip through one place. It con it went throughout the whole island, island. And, and all the surrounding little pieces. All of those Puerto little Rican. pieces of uh, farming and agriculture. Uh, El Fondo Boricua was able to grant ten thousand dollars this past month to Visit Rico. You can learn more about them at visitrico.org. They're a um, orga nonprofit organization that focused. Um, specifically on the agricultural and, and local farmers. Um, so they, they, they are the, the base of what grows in Puerto Rico. They're the foundation. They provide the food for their people, Our farmers the community, market. Yeah, everything. Definitely. So they're working with 20 local farms in Puerto Rico and um, from cleaning and um, rebuilding and, uh, and regrowing. So. 
And that's super important. That's what we need to focus on is rebuilding and regrowing. And where do we start with that foundation that's right there? Right. That's already has its roots in the ground, literally, with their crops and everything else. And we need to replenish that, I'm sure. Yes, definitely. And, and also local efforts here with Puerto Ricans that have moved. You know, there's a large number of emails that I've personally received through uh, Puerto Ricans and Minnesota Committee with uh, people who are on the island but have sent their children here to continue education and needing resources to, for funding, you know, uh, their education. Places for them to live. Places to live. Daycare. Uh, 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 you know, social services, health care, and even, even getting their license. It's sad because most people, if you ask, they don't recognize that Puerto Rico is a part of the United States. We're U.S. citizens. We have the largest military recruitment in the country. We have over 300,000 active military on the island. Yeah. Um, and, and we're born U.S. citizens, whether you're born on the island or you're born here. And, uh, you know, my father is a veteran um, from Vietnam War. My late grandfather fought in World War II, Purple Heart veteran. You know, we have veterans that are in need on the island and here that are not getting the services or being questioned. Uh, I've just recently heard uh, uh, from a family that moved from Puerto Rico, tried to get their licenses and people at, those, at the, the offices stated, we need your proof of citizenship when they're citizens and the proof of citizenship it's documented in their file so it's it's a bit uh, you know relieve each other from educating each one another mm -hmm. so that you're not ignorant to recognizing u.s history and puerto rico is a part of u.s history for over 100 years right so as we wrap up what is the last thing you want to say or something you really want to hit home for our audience I want to say first and foremost thank you to everyone who has stepped up to the plate to see how they can help, um, who have donated to El Fondo Boricua, and who have continued to educate others on what's happening in Puerto Rico. This isn't just a, a call for action for Puerto Ricans. This is a call for action for everyone. For humanity. For humanity. Um, you love you love our culture. You love our food. Everyone loves to dance at Despacito. Loves reggaeton. Loves salsa. You know. Um, loves to visit Puerto Rico. Well, we need that to continue to happen. But these visits may be now just not a vacation. It, it's it's a relief effort. Very so um, follow up with us. You can um, tweet me personally at Maria Isa M A R I A I S A. Uh, you can learn more about El Fondo Boricua, again, at our website, elfondoboricua.org. And uh, if you are a fan of my music, thank you, because you've been supporting, like I said, all of our music sales online. Not that you realized it, but <laughs> now you are supporting the efforts just by supporting your music. Yeah, definitely. So you can find more of my music. We've written a, a song specifically um, in support of the hurricane uh, victims called Levantate, and you can find more information on my website, IamMariaIsa.com. That's I-A-M-M-A-R-I-A-I-S-A.com. Well, and as a musician, you write about what you know, and this is close to home, and it needs to be said. Definitely. It's a beautiful island, beautiful people. Um, like I said, I was born in Minnesota, but Puerto Rico was born in me. Mm -hmm. So if um, there's any other, any other uh points people want to direct us that they may have not uh, seen El Fondo reach, El Fondo Boricua reach, let us know. We want, we're here with open arms, we're here with open ears and open eyes to make sure that those missions are completed. Maria, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. That's it for us at the St. Paul Forum. I'm Laura K. Prosser. Join us next week. <laughs>